Uh, my name is Matt Schmidt. I'm currently at the University of Hawaii. I'm an assistant professor there. And um, what I'm doing with design-based research, I'm currently working on two projects and I'm working on a third uh, to get it started. Um, one is to incorporate iPads in a teacher development program um, for a merged cohort of general education and special education teachers. It's an experimental cohort and we're trying to integrate technology across their entire curriculum. So that's kind of a fun project. Another thing that I'm working on is a 3D virtual learning environment that merges the real world and the virtual world so that we can have students on our neighbor islands. Hawaii has a number of uh, different islands that are separated by the ocean and uh, we're trying to create a 3D virtual environment where students can come to class virtually as avatars or physically and um, they'll be able to interact with each other in both modalities. And then the third project I'm working on is another virtual environment project which is looking at uh, increasing employment opportunities for people who have autism. So that's where I'm at right now. Great, Matt. Uh, sounds really exciting. Design-based research is going. Well, if I'm going to answer that question, I think I need to talk about where design-based research is right now. And where I see design-based research right now is kind of at a crossroads, which is appropriate because I'm at a conference which is design-based research at the crossroads. Um, what that crossroads is, is uh, there are many different avenues that are um, kind of feeding into this field right now, but some of the critical ones that I see are, um, we're learning a lot from the learning sciences and the approaches that they're taking. Um, and I think that we're also refining our methods quite a bit in terms of what we can learn from the learning systems that we design. For instance, with uh, automated learning analytics, um, I see that as kind of a big field. And we're also being able to kind of start to get into the black box, getting inside of people's uh, brains with EKG devices, and also doing some eye tracking. So there's some interesting things happening there in terms of how we can learn about how people are using systems that are new methodologies. Um, and feeding that into uh, design-based research as a generalized methodology, I think, is going to help the, uh, we won't call it a field of design-based research, but the approach of design-based research as a uh, research area. Um, so I kind of am taking more of a, a methods and a methodological perspective on where I see where design-based research is right now. But where I see it going, is kind of a hard question because um, I think that there is some identity building that needs to happen in the design-based research community. Um, many people feel that they know what design-based research is. Many people say that they're already doing design-based research. Um, but I find that anecdotally speaking, whenever I talk to them, I get a lot of, well, you know, we're doing iterative development. We have iterations. Um, but there's really no theory component. And that's, a, that's an area that I think really needs to be stressed and emphasized is that theory component and how that can generalize. And that kind of emphasizes the point of generalizability because that's an area where I think that design-based research has traditionally, uh, I don't want to say been weak, but that's an area where I think design-based research could have a greater emphasis and potentially have a greater impact as a methodological approach. Yeah, great thoughts, Matt. Um... Um, you're going to get a lot of advice as a doctoral student and as a burgeoning professor. Um, and it's up to you to kind of pick and choose <laughs> what advice you want to take and what advice uh, maybe you want to think about and maybe you want to be a little bit critical about. If, if I could go back and give myself advice whenever I was starting my PhD program, I think what I would tell myself is to find a project and to find people who are supportive of doing design-based research from the get-go. Um, 
it takes some time to realize that this is what I want to do. I want to learn about design-based research. And I think that learning about design-based research has probably been one of the best things that I have done as a researcher because it's taught me so much about quantitative approaches, qualitative approaches, how you can meaningfully mix them, um, and research design. Uh, and so for me, that was a really great move. That doesn't mean that it's right for everyone. But if you do decide that you want to do design-based research, get involved as early in your doctoral career as you can and push it through until you finish.